In this video, I would like to show you how the multi-axis roughing performs on you know slightly bigger or complex parts. So I have created the two pairs uh, on those two examples. For the geometry input and let's say floor surface, wall surfaces, I have selected the following. So in this case here, this is the floor surface. As usual, it covers all the area I would like to machine. And the wall surfaces is the entire model here. And basically that's it for the surface selection. In this case, it's exactly the same. So this is a floor surface. Note that it's a complete floor surface. Oh, no, it's not. Well, what you see, it's like it has the, the letters here trimmed out. So it's not covering the complete floor. But what is important is that the area that is supposed to be machined is um, completely covered by the floor surface. Make sure that this is the case. Um, so we can have uh, like the trimmed floor surface, but um, make sure that all the area you would like to cover with the two pass creation is um, um, having like a proper um, floor surface underneath. So those are the two examples and uh, I already have calculated the toolpath. Uh, let's start off with this example here maybe and have a closer look. Um, what I did is I used um, the adaptive roughing here uh, which creates a pretty cool looking um, pattern at least from my point of view and um, yeah, so this is one operation. The one operation created all the tool paths. I only have uh, one machining layer, just the floor. And let's see what um, that looks like in verification. Uh, let's hide the part number eight and just look at the, um, the verification. Also hide the tool path and just start here. I mean, the tool is not realistic but you can see that uh, adaptive roughing is performing quite nice in these shapes. The walls are also steep walls, so the walls are normal to the floor, which wouldn't create um, these um, triangle, big triangles here on the wall. So that looks nice, and let's speed it up a bit. You see also the sorting is just machining by regions. So it's not jumping around, it's just finishing off uh, each region, region separately. Okay, so this is the tool path. You can see here that the tool didn't get through here, but of course you can use a smaller tool later on. Okay, so this is the this example. Now, let's have a look at this example. It's example number um, seven. Here, I didn't use adaptive roughing. I just used the normal roughing. Uh, let me just create the stock model for the verification. Okay, let's select the surfaces. Apply, close, and then we hide the stock um, uh, surfaces again and hide the tool pass and now we just look at the cutting simulation, the verification, the result of the of the tool path. Yeah we had three layers. Um, all in all. Again, the tool couldn't reach all the areas here. But that is the result.